Jamie Sullivan. Hey, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here representing the uh, committee you appointed, the uh, Trash and Recycling Committee. We struggle with our name many times. Um, several of the members are in the audience today, uh, and you've all received the report. The report mm -hmm. will be up online yep. for the public to view. Yep. I can go over the, however you like to do it, I can go in strict detail or go through the very specifics. How would you like to proceed, Mr. Chairman? Um, oh, what do you suggest? I think why don't I give you the broad strokes and then we can get into discussion of okay, So the committee that was appointed by this board in order to come in and look at how the challenges that the town was facing with regard to you know, the recycling market changes as well as the amount of trash that our public works department is uh, uh, responsible for picking up and the challenges financially that that's putting on us. So we looked at ways to try and uh, come back to this board and make recommendations of how to approach that potentially to offset some of that revenue, or pardon me, create revenue, offset some of those costs, and we did that. We went through and, and met, <coughs> pardon me, approximately twice a month, um, and we had subject matter experts come in, we had citizens come in and speak to us, um, and the committee had robust discussions about all of these issues. Um, we want to take a moment and thank all of those committee members who volunteered their time on behalf of the town and this board for their time. Um, it was a, a great group of folks with, as uh, Mr. Hartnett said earlier, um, it was a diverse group of people that came in. And we, rep you know, folks from the business community, condos, residents, it was a great group of folks with uh, differing perspectives. We looked at one of the big issues you struggled with when this initially began was the condominiums. And essentially, to, to come to a, a resolution on that, the committee decided essentially to follow the policy that this board has had in effect since 2016, essentially as a fairness discussion. If you've been receiving trash pickup for 20 years, it didn't seem like a fair thing to the committee to, to cancel that at this point in time to continue to do so. Your policy generally sets uh, units that are above five units, new condos or condos that are developed, they won't get it in the future consistent with their our requirements from the planning process, but basically those that have been receiving it for an extended period of time will continue to do so. We looked at the commercial trash pickup um, as ways to reduce the load. Um, as we all know, the commercial businesses, especially at the beach, um, create, based on our tourist area, create a challenge and a substantial uh, cost to our department to go in and pick all of those materials up. Um, those routes can be three days a week or during the summer up to seven days a week for many of those businesses down there. So we had a long discussion about that and, and for a long period of time the discussion seemed to be some sort of a modified page you throw for that business community. This board had struggled with that or discussed that at a previous time as well. We seem to be making progress, got bogged down on um, what those costs should be, um, what those numbers should be for the page you throw or the modified version of that potentially there. In the end, uh, the committee felt that they didn't have enough data at the time to make an intelligent decision um, and decided to make a recommendation that we put that on hold for now and need further study on that um, for the board. Uh, there are other things that the commercial uh, briefly was touched on earlier in public comment. How do we reduce, and one of the things that we found with the subject matter experts coming in, we thought were really good examples of opportunities for us to reduce. We've had the discussion about glass. Um, there are some very interesting discussions that are going on in cooperation with the business community to come forward. You heard Mr. Hartnett speak earlier about um, the potential to slow down the amount of glass that's used in our beach area, switch to aluminum cans. As we all know, bottles are very heavy. That's a weight issue. We pay by the ton. If we can reduce our weight, we can reduce our costs. So that's a discussion that we, we believe needs to continue to happen um, and that we think that there's going to be good progress on. Other things we saw, uh, composting. Uh, one company came in and talked to us about composting. Um, so the experts told us that approximately 30, upwards of 30 or higher percent of the weight that is in our total trash stream is compostable materials, food. Um, you know, those pizza boxes we always struggle with, do they go in recycled or do they go in trash? Well, those are compostable materials, as are some of the you know, special plastics that are out there, are compostable plastics and straws and such you see many businesses switching to. So there's a real opportunity there to try and encourage, especially in our business community, to go into a com compost type of a circumstance where we divert out of our waste stream these items and move them to a compost. There are private companies that do that. They do a curbside. 
Um, this company that came in talked about another touristy type of place. One of their biggest users is a clam shack up in Maine, and the amount of diverted compostable material they have there is really phenomenal. So there's a great opportunity. We think more exploration has to happen in that area. There's a company that does it in this area called Mr. Fox, and they're ready to do it now. Um, I know personally in my house we've had that conversation of, you know, it's something to look at. And you can, each of us now individually can um, compost. We can have this company come. They pick it up much like we do when you, you uh, organize or, or bring them on, you become a customer. There's a fee structure based on the amount you do. But basically, you can have a small thing in your house that when you cook, you throw the scraps, the food scraps, the compostable material, you dump it into a larger container that either twice a week, uh, pardon me, twice a month, or more frequent if you choose to. They come, you put it out in your trash just like we do now, they pick it up and give you a new, new line or new container. Um, it's very interesting. And again, the numbers are pretty significant. So we think there's an opportunity there. Um, other contaminations are working on reducing, as we all know, contamination of our, our uh, recycling has been a real issue for us. We have to continue to educate, we have to continue to work on that, and these other things all work hand in hand. Uh, as we listen to you know, the diversion of weighted materials, composting glass, there's another interesting one called textiles, you know, the stuff we see now that go to the, if you get out of the transfer station, there's the donation bins and that type of stuff. Well, there's a lot of things apparently in textiles and there is a company that apparently will come to your curbside. You put it out just like you do your trash in some other container that they give you, and they'll pick it up for free. Um, and that's not only clothes, shoes, you know, the torn teddy bear, things of that nature that they can reuse those textiles. Again, reducing weight. Um, the pay as you throw, as, as we discussed and came to the end, and I'll give you the high points of what our final recommendations are. Um, the pay as you throw is something that, whether it be the modified program we discussed or a wider program, we think is something worthy of discussion now. It is the committee's recommendation that the board authorize either by putting a warrant article on and asking the voters to do so or authorizing now to hire out of surplus funds from this year um, one of a type of a company that came to visit us that is a, an expert in this waste management. They're experts in developing a pay-as-you-throw program to fit your community to look at what your goals are, all of the things that we were doing as a committee, but more data needs to be done, and these folks do it all over the country, um, to come in and tailor a program that can work for your community. In order for it to be successful, we hear, you know, I've seen some social media, as I'm sure all of you have gotten phone calls, there's some disinformation of what that would look like. We don't know what it would look like, whether it's a town-wide or even that modified pay as you throw, we in the committee talked about down the beach, something in between um, and I think we think that that's a, a an appropriate thing for us to bring in one of these consultants to help us develop that because if it's too if we find that it's appropriate for the community it's beneficial cost wise what's important is to develop that program message that appropriately educate the public if it has any chance of success again so those are you know the big overviews I'll go through the final recommendations we make uh, seven of them Committee recommends that the a solid waste recycling, basically a standing ongoing committee of much like the work we did. Education will be very, very important to the community to continue to reduce our contamination, work with the business community much like we discussed to make those ideas we talked about come to fruition. And also, if we choose to go down that path of hiring that consultant um, to work with those folks to collect the data necessary to analyze that and bring that to the board for the resolution of how we'll, we'll finally deal with that. Uh, so bringing together that, that standing committee I think is a very, very good idea. Times are different now than when we did it before. Um, there's much more opportunity. I, th I think folks are much more interested in understanding the impact on our environment that recycling has. I think there's opportunities there for us uh, to have that group continue. As we said, uh, hire a consultant to work with the committee and, and explore the pay as you throw programs. Um, so there's discussions about the revenue streams, and we've had some discussions about the most appropriate way to deal with the struggles that Public Works is dealing with on the cost issues. We know this year, so there's a couple of Warren articles. One of this, this recommendation of, uh, there's two different types of funds that were discussed about potentially taking a revolving or a special revenue fund to allow, much as uh, Mr. Hyde mentioned before, we all pay the $10, $20, whatever, to dump things at the dump or at the transfer station. They dispose of it. 
those monies go into the general fund and it comes out of their expense side of the ledger. Mm -hmm. An opportunity exists potentially to create funds where those, much like our ambulance fund or the detail fund, where those numbers could come in and be paid in and out fund basically for what it does. Mm -hmm. The key to that really is though that there's an ongoing revenue stream to come in and replenish them. Um, <clears throat> so more exploration of those, uh, but uh, funds of those nature. Support for DPW's uh, challenges. The, we need a DPW truck to replace the one, as you recall, last year that got additionally traded in, right? We need another trash truck. Uh, we recommend strongly supporting that, putting a warrant article to support what is recommended by DPW to replace uh, one of their trucks. The amount of personnel at Public Works in order to handle this job is challenged tremendously. We are at the very edge of what we can do. The uh, Public Works Department talked about needing additional personnel. The committee has recommended that we support um, the board authorizing another full-time person. Obviously, we'll have to determine how that will be funded, whether it's a warrant article, goes into a future budget, or we have some other means to try and fund that position. Um, and then finally, <coughs> pardon me, the seventh recommendation, again, as we said before, is to maintain the, the, the board's current policy with respect to the um, condos and the pickups that we maintain if you've had that service for an extended period of time. We do so. We do recommend that that five condo be expanded to, you know, apartments and multi-unit buildings, commercial buildings. So if you put up a new co apartment complex, it falls the same as condos. It's not separate. You know, we think an amendment in there makes some good sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's the overview of our seven recommendations in our, in our deliberations. Be happy to answer any questions you folks have. <coughs> questions? Mrs. Walsley? Yes, I have a few, I guess, uh, comments and uh, possibly questions. It is important to address the glass problem, and I quite agree with that. I'm glad to see some progress being made there. Uh, in the past 15, 20 years, we've really gone crazy on these multi-unit developments, the uh, 50 condo units and whatever. Uh, all of those should be required to have their own waste removal company taking care of the condo condominium um, trash. I don't think we should be involved at all in any of these multi-unit developments uh, as far as, as having public works remove the waste. Um, I still question whether the state of New Hampshire should be hiring a private hauler for Hampton Beach. Every other state park in the state of New Hampshire hires a private hauler to take away the waste from the state park. It's just an observation. I know I'm not <coughs> going to get anywhere with it, but I wanted to mention it. Now, if I the, can just, I know yeah. you brought that up. I think it's very important we look at the global picture on that. Okay. I understand your position, yep. but I also understand what that saves us. So there is that collection. They pick it all up, bring it to our transfer station, then they pay us for that waste. So yes, you can argue that, that maybe there's some wear and tear in our machinery and that type of thing to do that, but they pay for that. What's just as important, I think, has been lost in some of the discussions when I hear you talk about this is mm -hmm. they also pick up our side of the roadway and mm -hmm. save us substantial mm -hmm. money. There's been some mm -hmm. estimates and could be as high as $20,000 for the summer that would be necessary for us to hire people to do that work, either on overtime or additional folks. I just think it's important to balance those things when you make those comments. Mm -hmm. That's all. Who, who owns the west side walks? That's a that's a whole other quagmire. I'm not going to get into. Or it's well, not a trash issue, but the state owns. But but the those west trash side. barrels are trash barrels that we right. pick up during the week, I, and in the and nights and weekends they do that right. work for us. So don't forget that that savings of could be twenty thousand or more, Mary Louise. Well, it's a big savings to the community by the work that happens there. But finally, what I would mm -hmm. like to see, and you mentioned the composting, but that's. Um, probably difficult for many uh, families or uh, businesses to do. What I'd like to see us do is get on the bandwagon for trash to ash. Get those big facilities, I think there's a big one in uh, Andover, and uh, all of the trash, not, way, not glass, but all of the trash, including uh, composting, uh, you know, leftover food and all that and that can produce energy 
uh, and I think it's a smarter way to dispose of the waste. So just a, just a thought, and I appreciate sure. what the committee did. Uh, that was uh, a lot of work, and it would be a good idea to continue it to... Uh, so if I may, on that last point yeah. of the waste energy plants, I mean, that's absolutely something that's available to us. They have been bidders in the past, and, and we I'd anticipate like that they will be a bidder in the RFP that's going out now. Good. It really comes down to a cost issue for the town. What's the most beneficial to our folks mm -hmm. um, on, on the cost issue? So mm -hmm. we'll be evaluating that. Uh, we feel, well, based on some preliminary discussions we had, we'll probably see waste energy plants bidding on our stuff, mm -hmm. and we'll just have to see what the net dollars look like. Because I think that's the future. Okay. Regina. Right. Um, thank you, uh, Deputy Manager Sullivan. And I really appreciate the work that you, I've watched most of the meetings and I've read the minutes and I really appreciate the work that all of you guys have done. And I was glad to hear from our, especially Hartner tonight because I know he brought up some of the ideas that I know a lot of the business owners down at the beach because the beach does get singled out in this issue that's just the way it is that they have and that they are willing to do and I think that with like what you're saying there's still a lot of you know development that we need to figure out I don't personally I don't think that we're recycling the way we should be right now mm -hmm. that's not really anyone's fault that's just the way it is and I think there's plenty of options that we need to explore and I'm definitely in agreement that we need to continue at some form of a trash and recycling committee. But I also wanted to touch upon, well, Mary Louise brought it up again, and it was brought up at public comment. And I've done my own trash analysis, so, because, you know, it's so much fun talking trash. But I wanted to bring up, uh, this is just strictly looking at figures, figures that come from a public works maintained schedule that shows their total tons that they deal with mm -hmm. every year. And I also got a schedule from the finance department that shows what we charge the state of New Hampshire for the trash that they bring to our transfer station on an annual basis. And going back to 2015, all the way through the first nine months of 2019, so from 15 to 18, the state trash total is, averages about 2% of our total trash intake for the whole year. Okay, so that is for 15 through 18, and we get, I don't know, we've made between 21,000 and 19, we've made $43,000. Well, we've charged. For the charge. We've charged, yeah. So that's for the first nine months. Now take it in 2019, that is mostly because we've had them pretty much stop recycling, so we're taking that all as waste. So the amount that we actually take from the state of New Hampshire is very little. The the majority of the trash happens in the summer months, but it also happens not just in the summer months busy at the beach, it's the influx that the town has. April through September, 90% 90 90 of our trash hits the transfer station. So I feel, looking at numbers and looking at the discussions and living here my whole life, that I think that the commercial businesses at the beach, uh, I'm sure they contribute to a lot of the trash, but I think that we're, blaming them for just the issue that we have. I mean, we have a high influx. There's people that are only here from May to whatever it is, August, September, October. Now, if you look at the months consecutively, every single April, every single May, every single June, it's pretty much the majority of our trash. We don't have beautiful Aprils and beautiful Mays and beautiful Junes every single summer. I wish we did, but we don't. So I think that Depends on our definition of beautiful. <laughs> right, I guess so. But I know that a lot of waste happens during those you know, specific three or sure. four months, but it is only for three or four months. And we do have to remember that those people do pay a lot in taxes. They pay the highest tax rate, especially the ones that live in the village district. So I just wanted to point that out. I was shocked that the state trash only accounted for about 2 to 4% of the total trash on an annual basis, but it does. That's a very, very small number, very small. And we are getting a fee for that number, and they do pick up the west side. So I think that's very important to, uh, to make note of. And also, we have, we received some draft warrant articles that we haven't really discussed yet, but there is yeah. one in there from Public Works about doing some type of a study. 
-hmm. for handling waste of the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Is that in? So some of those were preliminary things done early by Fred. We'll be consolidating all of those. So when you see your final list, oh. if, if you if you feel these are things you want to see again, we will formulate those for you. Okay. You and tell I'm us tonight, give us direction. That's what we'll formulate. It'll be part of your packages. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I have, as of 930 so far, the year-to-date revenues collected from the transfer station, two line items totaled almost $261,000. Right. So ideally, if we could get that $261,000 to go into some type of a revolving fund that we could use to offset our expenses rather than just going into the general fund, is that what the committee had in mind? Yeah, that's, what, that's those, what I would eventually... That's what those like. funds do, and, and absolutely right. now... Um, legal has told us there has to be two different types of funds because of limitations in the law. Mm -hmm. One is a revolving, one is a special revenue, mm -hmm. one would be for recycling, one for trash. So we'd have to identify how that, that happens. Yeah. But again, the key is, you're absolutely right, we can do that offset, but understand how that works. When we take that, that right now we have two sides of the ledger, on this side we pay, on this side we, we do the ledger. When we move it into that fund, mm -hmm. those $200,000 won't be revenue coming in to offset taxes, there'll be an increase there. They'll go in and out and pay for itself essentially. Right, but, but it's gonna offset the expense. That's exactly right. That, that makes sense. Yep. So, all right, thank you. That's Mr. Waddell. Yeah, thank you, I think you guys did a good job. I also watched a lot of uh, your meetings. I don't have a life, I guess. <laughs> That's all I could do, but uh, you did a really good job. I like the idea that, that Dave came in and said the business is already to kind of step up and start thinking about the glass and start reducing that. I think that's important. The composting, I think, is uh, a super idea. I think that's, uh, I was in a clam shop up in Maine, and they had the big composting there, you know, and a lot of the, lot of the trash goes in there. It saves. You do. You see that in many places now. Yeah, yeah. it saves a ton. Uh, the educating on the recycling, I think that's a great idea. I think hiring a consultant is a good idea. I th you know, some people might think we're kicking the, the can down the road, but we're not. We want to do this, we want to do it properly when we do it. We want to make sure that it's not something that's going to come back in, in, in five years again with people saying, let's redo it, let's redo it, it's not right. So I think, I think you guys were on the right track. I think you came in with a good report. Um, the one question I have is, you did deal with the fairness in the committee, I, I know. And I know there were places that lost their recycling bins last year. Did you come up with a recommendation for those going back to those people? Yeah, no, what we recommended was what the policy of the board is currently um, in some of those other, the one-offs, no, we haven't specifically talked about particular locations. There were a couple of folks that talked about their own circumstance, but in general, I think the recommendation was to go back to the board's policy and in talking with Public Works, I think there's some adjustments in what they're seeing curbside, the real thing of this is a new unit, as Mrs. Woolsey had pointed out. Really, it's not what your policy, it, 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 they should be on their own. Their documents show they should own. It's a new thing that maybe has been built in the last year or so, but for some reason slipped through the cracks and there's material being picked up there versus another unit which may have had recycling for 15 years and then suddenly that stops. So there, I think there's some for those one-off things we probably need to address and deal with them one at a time, but the global policy is what we focused on. And, and DPW is going to try to do that or? If you give us that direction, we will, yes. Okay. Thank you. Rusty. I think a lot of work went into it. I think uh, I like the idea of the uh, bottle ban, if you want to call it, on, on uh, the beer, and, and uh, there isn't much you can do it. I think, uh, but if we do that, I think we need to have a place where people can dump the glass, that they can bring that so they I can I may have it. been uh, or, short on saying that that's underway. Public Works is trying to pilot that now and put locations for the coming season able to do that in convenient locations. Even if we went so far as to one day a week, that's picked up just glass. Yeah. You know, and and that could be done so that it's separated from everything else uh, when we're down the beach. So that's a very good point that I, I think I, if I may jump back in on is in talking to the one expert that came in with us about these modified programs or these pay as you throw programs. In order for them to be successful, we've got to talk about them. But many of them then get piloted; they run them for a short period of time to see mm -hmm. were our assumptions correct? Did we get it right? 
before you launch it full. And I think that's very important here because many of us come in with our preconceived ideas what it looks like. I, sure. I have heard one discussion where a description that an individual gave us that the pay as you throw became private haulers in a prior community they lived in and what have you. Um, and I get that. I've seen that. We've heard those stories. But that's not at all what we're talking about here. Our DPW is going to do that work. They do it the best. They do it efficiently. They do it well. Um, it's just the manner in which we do it. And do we look to generate a revenue to help offset some of our expenses somewhere? And looking at your, your recommendations, I, I, I totally agree. We should, you know, the, the additional labor down there, that's one of our departments that really needs the extra help. And I think that would go a long way with doing this. So. Thank you. Good report. Thank, thank you for bringing it in. Yeah. Um, what would people do with the glass? If I'm talking about people, at, you know, in private residences. Right now, there's no discussion about private residences doing anything different. Mm -hmm. So if you have your, you know, you're recycling those currently. Um, I think the discussions you've been talking about are really focused on the large scale, what's happening down the beach, because of the tourist nature of it. Yeah. There's a lot of glass that's yeah. produced. So uh, none of our discussions really, or I shouldn't say none, some felt if we're going to do it for one, we have to do it for everybody. Uh, but realistically, the focus right now is on our volume. What's the big end? And that's been the discussion at the business community, as you heard Mr. Hyde talk about, of the idea of potentially reducing that. It's a safety factor in that, you know, you know, a lot of glass is found down on the beach. And that glass can often come from, you know, folks that will go into a convenience store and buy the beer and bring it onto the beach or buy glass bottles. And to try and reduce some of that has the benefit of being safe on the beach as well as reducing weight for us. So to answer your question in general, what we picture right now is diverting the glass if we can have clean glass, that is a collection central point, both at the transfer station and perhaps different places convenient for these businesses to take it. They dump their glass. It's not commingled. And therefore, as Public Works has said, we can get a reduced price for clean glass because it's easier. We're still going to pay for it. Uh, we're still going to have to transport it and yep. deal with those separate locations. So it is yet to be seen what the savings could be, but that's an opportunity there. And I think the ultimate goal is, as you've heard, the business community, they want to try and reduce the number of bottles that are used in the businesses down there and switch to alternatives, which reduces that heavy glass. So how long would that take for them to put a, uh, to get people not to have the glass period? Like they're saying that it's uh, everybody's behind it, like the... Uh, the liquor sales people and stuff like that. How long would that take? We have a, I, I have not put a timeline. That's the feedback. But would I, we need a warrant article to do that? I no, I don't think so. I think that's the thing, Rick, about some of these, that the, the, you can decide the strength and weakness on the warrant article is the idea of hiring the consultant pay as you throw. Mm -hmm. One of the recommendations from folks was put it on a warrant article. That does two things for you. It takes the temperature of the community in order to see whether they're even at all interested in a pay-as-you-throw program. So we get that benefit and, you know, they're to prove it or not there. The downside to that is I think we do lose some momentum between this point right now we're having these discussions as we're preparing to lead into the season. If we hire a consultant, successful programs that we've seen, it takes time to build, A, a program that's good for us, <coughs> B, a consensus, and support in the community for what you're doing. And that, I think, is probably a smarter approach for us. Yeah, but what about uh, how fast could we get to the point where we wouldn't have glass being sold uh, through the liquor sales at the beach? Could that be done by next year? Well, I think this summer, summer we can have an season? impact. I, I can't say that I can guarantee that we'll have yeah. no glass. Yeah. But I think the idea is to start with your largest folks first and get them on board. It is a voluntary process. We don't have the authority, according to our attorney, to say, pass an ordinance that says there will be no glass. Mm -hmm. I do know some of our state reps are working on a thing of that nature, and the senator are working on something of that nature to give the authority. You've seen uh, Portsmouth talking about doing single-use plastics and such. Um, so there is some work being done potentially to restrict that and give some authority potentially. But for us, I think what we do, uh, our recommendations are uh, recommend that we get this consultant on board as quickly as we can, start developing that, and then we work for this season to be prepared to implement some of these in the business community. Let's get them in and have discussions. Can yeah. we make that happen? I, for one, am in favor of not kicking the uh, bag down the road mm -hmm. and just doing something now, okay. not waiting. Uh, I think it's far too long. We've talked trash all 15 years that I've been here, and I've seen it kick down the road over and over and over again. So I think that... Um, 
uh, uh, we need to look at these things, like for instance, we just talked about glass. I think we definitely need to look about the bag and tag. It's very, very successful in Exeter. There's virtually, I have never, ever heard a person complain about it over there. I think the people that I know that live there are very proud that it has re uh, resulted in uh, an excellent amount of recycling. I think that's really the only way to get the recycling going, in my opinion. Um, I like the idea of the Mr. Fox, and I'm not so familiar with the textiles, but that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I definitely like the idea of uh, having a special fund created uh, so that it utilizes uh, a way that the tax, uh, you know, that it will reflect in what people pay for taxes. I think it's also um, very, um, I'd like to see all, as many, it to be, a, I'd like to see that be the same for pretty much everyone. The one, um, exception that I would have to think twice about and would rather have a discussion here at the board is about the condominiums. Um, I think that as far as I'm concerned, everybody that's, uh, all, I've sat on the zoning board myself and watched that the, all of these people have been told that they weren't getting um, uh, uh, pickup of their trash. I really don't see how anyone should expect it when they bought the condominiums with the idea, the whole idea of condominiums being uh, put in these neighborhoods where there's such high density is that they do take care of that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, now the uh, place next to me, uh, Little Jack's, that's going condos, which is a great thing as far as I'm concerned. That's what the guy, you know, the, the owner wanted to do with this property. It's always been his plan. Well, you know, there will be 30 units there and even if it is replacing a restaurant, but it's still a lot of people living there mm -hmm. on one piece of land. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why anyone would expect to have their trash picked no, up. No, I agree. That's what your policy is, You're and the right. committee and embraced that like going forward. I would see that. Yeah. There's only one um, uh, place, you know, there's that one condominium that was approved, uh, which is uh, the one that was done by Warren Kelly, which I believe is six units, um, and that they were told that they were going to get their trash picked up, even though it was six units. That's the one that I have. I would have to think about because um, I, I saw it over and over again. It was discussed. It was determined that those that was going to be picked up. Um, I w would like to, you know, understand how many more employees we would need with uh, the idea about the bag and tag. Um, and you just mentioned one, is that? That's what Public Works is requesting at this time to implement some of the things we've talked about in the committee report. Now again, the board has to deal with, and Fred's office, we need to come back with you. If that's something you're interested in exploring, how can we accomplish that? There's a couple of different ways, depending on what you recommend and tell us to do here, that we may be able to fund that. That I don't see happening until next year, at least after the town meeting, based on some of the results of, of what we come out of here. Mm -hmm. But how, so in other words, we could take the money from the unspent um, funds that we have to do, to hire the consultant? Yes. Well, you can, out of the surplus that we're dealing with this year, you can uh, recommend we'll go out and get a, a, a find a consultant for you with a contract. If it's less than the 15000 which we fully expect it would be, we could come in to you with a recommendation to hire these folks. Um, and the scope of the work that we would ask them to do would be part of negotiating that agreement. So yeah, we, we definitely could make that happen if that's what the, the board chooses. And do you agree with that, Fred? <coughs> We take it from the bottom line of the existing town budget because we can't take it from the honest, unreserved yeah. fund balance. Oh, okay. Well, that's, you know, kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I would like to see something done. I, I don't want to wait for another year of the meeting of the uh, recycling committee. I think that is what I call kicking it down the uh, road. And, you know, I would say that we should put a time frame, as far as I'm concerned, of uh, let's get something done by the time next summer starts. I would like to see something happening myself. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, to, but to implement, I think, a timeline to implement a pay-as-you-throw, mm -hmm. a bag and tag, and what the vision of that we have bags everywhere. Because what would work for Hampton is something that we 
manage within our, our, our current setup. I, I, nobody wants bags again. That's a problem for us. But there is a, mo a program we can figure out with this, these folks and we can put together for Hampton on how we pay per throw, whatever that looks mm -hmm. like and what's appropriate. And that would be done with the, with the consultant. So timeline, what I would envision is we would bring them on board now. There's some data you need. There's some things that need to happen. But to think that the timeline we would have a Warren article for this year's town meeting, I think, is extremely unrealistic. Well, do we have to have a Warren article? No. No, well, that's what I mean. It. I'm looking to see something done sooner so, than later. Th and that's a discussion for, for you folks to deal with. But I think the first thing is to develop that program, take the consensus of the information we have, continue that work, formulate a program that can work for us. There will be multiple stages of that in my vision. And we can come back at every stage when we have to have approvals to the board for approval for that. Yeah. And I but the implementation, Rick, of these other things, they can voluntarily be done, and we can continue to work with our community and folks to start doing those things right now. Yeah, and I am in favor of um, working with the businesses and working with the committee. I'm not saying that I don't want to see the committee, but I'm looking to see something done sooner than later. Yeah. I think it just to kick it down the road and see a whole number of summer go by without something happening to me. I agree, support. but but we also need to... As we've done the times before, I think these things have been born out of more of a, you know, a, a, an incident or an issue where it comes and we put it on and there wasn't a really good described vision, I believe, in the times we've done this before. I think that's mm -hmm. vital. Yeah. And according to the consultant who has success in doing this, once they build the program that fits your needs, that takes time, they've never had one fail to implement mm -hmm. because it takes time. You tailor it to this, the particular community and their needs get buy-in from folks, that takes time to develop so and build. So was there a consultant that was there at the meeting? Yeah, it was one of the subject matter experts we brought in, um, and they are uh, a company that does this primarily in, no in the, the New England area, but the, their folks are all over the country that they deal with. Now, I would definitely like to see that you look in to see who Exeter used because yep. they have an excellent system. That Dover has well a good one, them. some other folks as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Regina? Yeah. I. Can you explain pay as you throw? Because I'm hearing all these things about Exeter, and I mean, do Exeter have weekly rentals and three or four day rentals like we have here? I mean, we have people in three, and out of here. Three and four day rentals. Well, like pay as you throw. How is that sure. going to work in the summertime? Um, well, the, we had had a discussion of a model. Museums. We had had a discussion of a model. There's a couple of ways. One we discussed would work like this. Um, if let's say two barrels, just like a resident has two barrels. I own a company or a business and I use 15 barrels. We could work out a payment scheme or payment that they pay for the extra barrels. Uh, could be an up advance during the summer. You're going to pay, I have seven days a week, I'm going to pay the extra. Um, there's ways you can do that that are, we talked about frankly just a stickering system where it's kind of like the beach stickers we put on the stickers we put to park. Something that would go on the barrel to signal the driver, yep, this one's paid for for the year. I pick up these two I pick, you know, that are appropriate to be picked up. That's one quick version. Again, I think to go through that with successful programs in the past, that work needs to be assisted with us with a consultant that does this for a living. So see you're the not talking about see. actual bags. No, I, I think ba I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think bags uh, are an that's appropriate what way. Does. Now, if we, again, there has to be a way to track that revenue if we go. And I think that's the whole point right here in this discussion is why there's more exploration and more study that needs to be done to see what's effective for us. And, and I to think knee jerk would... and jump to it, we're going to end up with the same result we've had before. Where if people are confused, they're going to say no to it. We have to get folks yeah, on board. And, you know, that's, that does make sense. But the thing is, I would like to see everyone treated equally. And I think what's the advantage for the taxpayer is that the business people would pay the same as the residents. Right. And that's what they – I'm not sure what Exeter does about business. I really don't know that. Yep. Um, I talked to an Exeter resident about some of that who have the businesses along the front and where they do a bag system – they actually have colored bags. Now, we can still do a version of that, but we want to use our canisters. So, yeah, they, they, some of the commercials, I understand, are to pay as you go. So to explain it a little further, what does that mean? When you, we say fairness. The committee struggled with fair, right? I mean, because it's all how do we define that individually. Yeah. And really, when you came to it, there's a pendulum of fair. The easiest way where everybody's treated the exact same is, uh, on the one hand, you can't. What's the town's obligation? We have a transfer station or a place for them to dispose of trash. Everybody bring your stuff. That's fair. 
Yeah. Is it realistic for this no. town? Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and the other end is everybody pays their own way. You pay for what you use. And again, a realistic part of that, twice yeah. before the town has said no. Maybe somewhere in the middle is what's appropriate for this town. We need further study and further collection on that. So I think to your point, Rick, we can get traction by deal with some of our weighty issues, continue the education, spread the word on Mr. Fox to reduce it, and deal with this idea with the business community of reducing glass or eliminating glass from our waste stream as much as possible and alternatively going to other forms of beverage. Mm -hmm. And it sounds that one thing of dealing with a vendor I saw, thought sounded tremendous. Yeah. No, and I understand that. But again, I see that, you know, I think the, the people that are, you know, the, at the beach, they don't use it in the wintertime. They should be given a credit for what they don't use in the winter. But it should be the same. I think it should be the same. For and that's people. where, again, as I a think balance, that's why Exeter's a works. pay as you throw is exactly right. Um, mm -hmm. One of the people actually was there from the Mr. Fox, the waste diversion. One of the young ladies that was from the company there lives in Dover, and she talked about it, and she was pretty funny. In a two-person household, she said, I, I, I stuff that bag for every last thing I can, and I don't put out a trash bag, but every other month. Mm -hmm. Everything else is composted or recycled. <clears throat> and that is another issue that the way the experts have told us that you really – reduce your contamination, have a more robust recycling program and these other programs, is it's an economic incentive. Mm -hmm. If I can just throw anything I want in there and there's no consequence to it, yeah. that behavior will probably continue. Unless there's some sort of a incentive to do something different, we're absolutely going to have the altruistic folks that compost right now. We may grow that because there is, frankly, a lot more environmental awareness today than there was eight, ten years ago. So there's some successes and reductions we'll find from that, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I think they're great programs. But to have a substantial, cohesive program is why the committee feels the study of a helping this outside consultant mm -hmm. will help us get to where we need to be. Um, I, yeah, again, it sounds like there's a little kick down the road here. I, and that's I hear what that. I don't like. Yep, I hear but that. I'd like to see everybody, particularly the residents, treated fairly. We agree. And I'd like to see the businesses, okay, they don't use it in the wintertime. Um, so maybe they get, you know, a better, some deal where it works out in the idea about the bag yep. and tag yep. or whatever. But I can't see how this wouldn't possibly help reduce the taxes if there was money coming in and the money being used in some type of a revolving way. To, uh, I, I, I agree completely, but that's incumbent on the decisions that, yeah. that this board, the budget committee, and the town as a whole makes, yes. If we save two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, the question came up, and you know, there's the cynical people of value oh, taxes will never go down. Well, I, I get that, I understand that cynicism, but it's the community that develops a budget. We're in that process currently, and if we reduce and save that from an expense side, we don't need that. But there are other high priorities. Mm -hmm. that, you know, this, that's the process. Okay. But we would absolutely offset if we don't need the money. Mm -hmm. You know, Fred, Fred's office and ours are very simple. Mm -hmm. We're not putting it in there. You know, okay. we, we put in what we believe. I, I think we need a motion to uh, to hire this consultant with how Fred said to uh, yeah. get the funds. So and I'll make, a, I'll make that motion that we we I'll, move forward. I'll second it, and I'd like to say something. Uh, okay. But, and then the other thing, I, I, I still think we need to look at doing the uh, one, two, three uh, Warren articles. I think we need to support those, the three that they brought up. Which One, we mentioned, which that. would be the uh, the fund, the revolving fund to support trash collection, a special revenue fund for the recycling, so it moves that funds from that, and the other one is uh, to authorize the purchase of a new trash recycle truck as required by. EPW. So here's what I would say: if you stick with your motion on the consultant, that's something that we need to work on immediately. Yep. Those I others other items, if you can give be. us a consensus, you will see them in your packet. We'll work on those. And as you start to deal with warrant articles, they'll be on your table. Right. Okay. And okay. Jim? I think the important thing to look at when we're talking about other towns that are successful is how long did it take them to get there to be successful. And yep. I think that's what Jamie's saying, is if you have a consultant come in, you want to make sure the program is in place that's going to work and not just putting them. I mean, so we're not kicking the, the can down the road. What we're doing is saying, let's do it properly. 
let's bring it in. Let's let's make sure that the Warren article, whatever we put out there, is the one that's going to work. So I mean, Exeter might be very very <laughs> successful, but how long did it take them to get there? Yeah, they were successful at the beginning. Well, yeah. how long did? But how about? You know, I think we got to uh, think about that. Yeah, and I agree. It's it's are, so. the, the the program has to be tailored to the community and what the community wants. That's yeah, vitally important. Well, and that's what I want is to make sure it's fair for everyone. And that's, that's what's right. not happening today. Yeah. Well, and again, that definition of fairness is a moving target. We found oh, on the committee. Right. I think it's map. time to not kick and that the, down the road. Agreed. And the. They, we're, we're a lot different than Exeter is. Much different. Yeah, well, you know what? Exeter has a huge <laughs> uh, commercial uh, presence, probably bigger than Hamptons. Not, not a transit or right. part-time one. That's we have the, the volume is what's very, very community. unique about us. Right. We have a short intense span volume period for, is a unique right. for us. Yeah. Right, so I think that's why we need to have the consultant come in and look at it. I think mm -hmm. that's the, I, I agree with that. I agree with that as well, but um, I'd like to have a quick discussion on it. So, yeah, so the pay as you throw, my concern is with the transients, as you just brought up again. So if they don't do what they're supposed to do and they just throw everything away, mm -hmm. that's going to get charged to our guys, the taxpayers, right? Uh, no, I don't know that I follow your no. question. Well, I think the, the whole point of a pay and throw is that you eliminate pay as for much what trash you use. as possible. Yep. Yep. So if you have a renter there for a week, I mean... They're just going to throw everything away. You should. The people should be giving them the bags. Yeah, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I, I have an experience of my, my family member rents a place, and it has well, a I very mean, yeah, I mean, I would yeah. do it too. But so I'm are there going to be, yeah, and again, I don't want to get off track, but this is why mm -hmm. we think it's important to talk with someone who's an expert in this area because, right. hey, let's simple the idea of the modified we talked about a moment ago of, all right, everybody's going to get, I mean, just hypothetically, you're going to get two free pickups, but you're going to pay for everything else. Mm -hmm. What works at the beach, let's think about that, that we have to modify for us is, okay, you're at Regina's restaurant, and you have 15 barrels, and you're paying for 14 of those barrels, and you put them out. Well, what happens when somebody starts throwing their beach chairs and their other right. things that aren't appropriate in there? So we yeah. have to deal with that issue because it's real. Mm -hmm. We deal with it. Yeah. That's unique to our beach circumstance. We see it. So we're going to have to find a solution to that. It's not as simple as just pay, because we're going to have to find another solution. No, they and should have the barrels and not showing. Yeah, exactly. Right. So there'll be some in, other things that we'll have to create out. for our circumstance to address Agreed. all so of these So this issues. motion would be, be hire the consultant. Yes, and then we can to hear see what how the consultant we can, has to and say. And we can take that out of the current budget? Yes. We'll come back to you based on if this vote is approved. We will then go out, look for, engage, get numbers, come back to you uh, before we engage that person. But if okay. this is authorizing us to go out and explore that and put that together for you is, is how I assume that motion yes. is being made. All right, thanks. Yeah, okay. and I'm just going to throw this out there. I know in Exeter a few years ago it was $2 a bag. I think it's two seventy-five now, so it does, the bag does go up as it does. things go on. Prices vary based upon what you want to recoup. Right. Mrs. Wolseley? I don't want to see us with a ton of special money articles. We've got enough stuff on our shoulders. Uh, but I think that the uh, we need, really need to explore that trash to ash stuff. Yeah, that'll okay. be a that'll be a discussion part of the RFP Gotta that goes it. out on our other end. All those in favor? No. Uh, are you for or against? Well, I'm I'm being nice. For or against? She's for. For okay, yeah. unanimous. Thank Very you. Very good. Now, I assume, did I catch that there's a consensus on these other items in the recommendations? What about the issue of establishing the standing committee? You all, is that no, something you I folks want to I heard a consensus for that. Yeah. Very good. So what we'll do then is, um, I guess, put out, there are some folks on this committee who want to do it. I think it's, you don't want to have 15 people. Right. I think that's a challenge. We want to reduce the numbers perhaps to this thing going forward. So we'll come forward with a proposal to you. Um, and ask folks who are interested in doing it to put their names forward again and ask the board later to, to deal with that if that's what yeah. you'd like. Okay. And I'm looking forward to um, hearing from this consultant. I think we should do it as soon as possible. Agreed. Because I agree, I, I'm for moving forward. I'm not waiting. I don't want to see us wait until another summer with the committee, no matter how good they are. I think we need to do something now. Not trying to overstep, but the phone calls are already out, assuming that maybe yeah. you folks would have supported that idea. So hopefully we'll have something for you fairly Okay, quickly. great. Thank you very much. Thank you. For everything that you did.